This is my AI controlled robotic arm and his name is Ollie. Thanks, Ollie. You just looked a little hungry, sir. Ollie, can you pass me the screwdriver? Right away, sir. I'll get anything your short human arms can't reach. Thank you. Ollie completely changed the way that I build things, but especially he changed the way that I keep organized. But before Ollie started helping me around the office, he was just your regular AI assistant. Ugh. Sir, I see that you're struggling. If I had some type of body, I would be able to assist. You know what, Ali? I think that's a good idea. Okay, Ali, let me know what you think for this body of yours. Well, sir, I was thinking a robotic arm would suffice. How about we start with defining the degrees of freedom? In simple terms, degrees of freedom is just the number of ways an object can move or rotate. If you look at your arm, your shoulder can rotate and move a whole bunch of ways, your elbow bends, your wrist tilts, all these add up to the amount of degrees of freedom in your arm. For Ali, I'm gonna give him six degrees of freedom. That means he can pick up any object in any orientation as long as it's in his reach. So now speaking of reach, after spending a couple of days designing Ali and CAD, I decided to go for massive 37 inch reach. But there is one major drawback of making an arm this big, is that you're gonna need some super powerful motors. So for the first three joints, we're gonna be using these beefy motors. And when you pair these big motors with a 10 to one gearbox, you honestly get some insane levels of torque. Sir, I see that the gears are 3D printed. Are you sure that it's gonna hold up? Ali is gonna be fine. But anyway, now that we know the motors are way strong enough to hold our arm, it's finally time to start building. The very first thing that we're gonna do is handle the shoulder. So we're gonna have our shoulder tilt joint as well as our shoulder rotation joint. Then the last joint that's using the big motor is gonna be the tilt of the elbow. And then for our next two joints, we're gonna be using these teeny tiny motors because the less weight at the end of the arm, the better. Trust me, I learned from experience. For the very last joint, I just kept this super simple and just doing a regular servo motor. But if you do find yourself thinking, wow, Nas, you built this arm pretty fast. It must have been easy. Say hello to my box of revisions. <laughs> okay, so now that this behemoth of an arm is built, let's start making it move. So each joint is paired with a motor and gearbox, but also an old drive S1 motor controller. But what makes these old drive S1 motor controllers special is that they can control the exact velocity, position, and torque of each motor. And they do this with something called encoders. So in order to match the encoder position with the actual min and max angles of the actual robot joint, we just need to perform this calibration so that the max angle is the max encoder value and the min angle is the minimum encoder value. So now all we have to do is send to each motor the exact angle that we wanted at and it goes there. And as I'm doing all this testing, I kind of ran into a problem. Something broke. And it turns out that Ollie was actually right. But after spending a couple of days trying different designs, infill changes, I think I got something that worked, well, at least for now. With that problem fixed, now we have another one. Moving a robot arm joint by joint just isn't efficient at all. That is where something called inverse kinematics comes in. When you want to go pick up something, you think about the end point and where your hand needs to go. You don't think about the position of your shoulder, your elbow, and your wrist need to be at to get to that point. Humans are smart. We can do this without thinking, but robots like Ali here, not so much. But so we don't have to do the complex math ourselves, we're gonna use a Python library called PyBullet. So all we have to do is upload our CAD design, define the limit, give an endpoint, and boom, all the joint angles are solved and the inverse kinematics is solved for us. So even though we were able to avoid the math this time, most of the time robotics, you just can't. And the most important thing is making sure that you understand the foundational concepts. And that is very easy to do if you're using the right tools. So that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in. Brilliant. A lot of people always seem to ask me, Nas, where did you learn how to build these robots? And even though I did technically go to school for it, honestly, 90% of what I've learned has came from courses like the ones that they have on Brilliant. A great example of this is Brilliant's course on coordinate transformations. And something that I absolutely love about Brilliant's courses is that they're interactive. They ask you questions. I have always been a big believer is that you can watch tutorials all day, but unless you're putting things into practice, the knowledge won't stick. 
And if you want to see how relevant this course is, just make sure you stay to the end of this video because if I did not understand and learn about coordinate transformations, Ali would not be able to work. So if you want to learn free with Brilliant, either go to brilliant.org slash Nas Lewis, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also giving you 20% off a premium annual subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Wonderfully said, sir. But how am I supposed to see? Well, Ali, I already have these 3D depth sense cameras that could already see in X, Y, and Z. That's good to hear, sir. I'm assuming you've also mapped the camera's coordinate system to the robot arm so they reference the same point in 3D space? Um... Huh? Well, what Ali is talking about is the hand-eye calibration problem. When the camera detects an object, it only knows the position relative to the camera but the robot needs that position relative to its own base, and those two coordinate systems are completely different. And to line up both of these coordinate systems is a little bit of a challenge. So the calibration almost completely relies on this checkerboard. We have to make sure the camera knows the exact dimensions of every checker so it can use it as a reference. And this reference is how the camera knows how far something is away from it. Then with our camera mounted to our gripper, this is called eye in hand calibration, we want to make sure we take a whole bunch of pictures with the arm at completely different positions so the camera can get as much references as possible. And now we use the data that we got from the pictures as well as the different poses and we plug it into a formula and that formula gives us the difference in position between the camera and the robot base. And now we should be able to use that to match the coordinate systems. So if the camera sees the object here, the arm should be able to pick it up. Oh! But as you can see, it didn't work and we missed. And going through this process, we missed a lot. And when trying to solve this hand-eye calibration, I ran into countless problems. The first of which, printing my calibration board completely ruined the scaling, so the sizes I was reporting were completely wrong. But even after fixing that, guess what? We still missed. After I tried dozens of solutions, I try using different formulas, trying different poses, just about everything that you could think of, but again, still missing. And at this point, I had to honestly say I was kind of losing faith in the project. But then I just took a deep breath and I realized I've been trying to find a software problem when the problem could just easily be in the hardware. So I started taking everything apart and every single issue that was in the hardware started to show itself. There was too much bend at the lower joints. I had a significant amount of backlash in these gears. Also, I had the entire heavy robot arm mounted to a plastic table, which is causing even more unneeded movement. So to fix this, I tightened up all my tolerances, completely redesigned the base of the robot, and then mounted everything into a sturdy wooden board. And then after all of that, I ran the calibration one last Time. Yes! 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 Oh my gosh! Yes! Absolutely amazing, sir. I don't care what Ada says about you. I think you're an amazing engineer. Huh? What does Ada say about me? Okay, whatever. And now that the robot arm is fully functional, it is finally time to give Ali control. So here's the plan. We're gonna give Ali three pieces of information. First, the camera feed, so he knows what the world looks like and what's happening. Second, the goal, which is what we want him to do. Ali, can you do me a favor and pick all the items you see in a straight line? Next, actions, which is what he can do. Pick up, pick up an object or place an object. When we ask Ali to do something, he looks at the image and finds the object he needs to either pick up or place. Then Ali sends back a step-by-step -step plan to reach the goal. So if I say something like, Ali, can you pick up the blue ball and put it in the white bin? Picking up the blue ball. Placing the blue ball into the white bin. But we do have one little problem. Ali is just a little bit clumsy. But even though we might not be able to fix his clumsiness, we could at least add a way for him to check to see if he messed up so he could self-correct. So currently right now, Ali only scans the environment before he does any movement. And then that's when he comes up with his full plan. But to fix this instead, 
after every action, we're going to have Ali reanalyze the environment and do the next best move. Placing the blue ball into the blue bin. This might make Ali overall operate a little bit slower, but I do think it's worth it. So now with Ali completely built, we're going to pit him to the test with a couple of challenges. But before that, if you've been liking the video, be sure to give the video a like. And also, if you want to see the changes and how I improve Ali in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So the first challenge that we gave Ali was a very simple sorting challenge. I simply just told him, Ali, can you sort the balls in the bin by color? And as you can see, Ali just completely obliterates this challenge. Beautiful, Ali. Come on, come on, come on, guys. Come on, guys, guys. Yes, Ali! Yes! But then I thought, okay, this is not a real world scenario because every object is not going to be a perfect spear for him to grab. So I challenged Ali a little bit more. First with the objects, but also with the prompt that I gave him. All I told Ali was to clean up the table. And Ali's thought process was, he saw a whole bunch of items on the table. He saw the bag to the left side of the table. The user must want me to pick these items in the bag. And he was actually right. And with multiple different objects of different colors, different shapes, different weights, Ali again absolutely destroyed oh. this challenge. Oh my God. Good, 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 good. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. But Ali's perfect streak of beating challenges was soon coming to an end. The next nice, challenge, nice. I really wanted to focus in on Ali's precision and accuracy. So I asked him to stack the color blocks nice. by size. And yes. Ali started off insanely yes. strong, but when he was placed in that last block, he was just no. a little bit off. So I reset and told him to try again. And the same issue happened. He nice. messed up as soon as he got to that white block. So close. Oh, ho, ho. try again, try again, try again. But I always believe the third time nice. is a charm, so I gave Ali one more chance. Nice. And of course, he nice. nailed it. Come on. And honestly, I was more excited nice. than him. Come on. Yes! Ali for the win! Ali for the win! I am planning to improve him so he could do a wide range of tasks like folding clothes and pouring me drinks. So make sure you guys comment below. If you had your own AI robot arm, what would you have it do? And also, if you want to learn more about my other AI assistants like Ada, click on one of these two videos.